The first and the only one. The Su-47 Burkut, the most conceptual Russian fighter jet. This very beautiful and unusual airplane was produced in only one copy, but the project was called a success. Why the Su-47 did not go into production, and whether such a scheme has prospects, it is worth looking into in more detail. The idea of the reverse sweep wing is by no means new. The first gliders with such a wing were created back in the 30s in the USSR, and the first airplane that took to the air junkers Ju-287 first flew in February 1944. It became a Soviet trophy and was thoroughly studied by Soviet engineers. Such a wing was on the passenger IL-14, which was produced from 1950. German civilian light transport aircraft HFB-320 Hansa Jet, 1964, Swedish training aircraft Saab MFI-15 Safari, 1969, and a couple of gliders. These are all the models that existed by the time work on the Soviet fifth-generation fighter began. The Soviet and American designers had almost identical ideas about the characteristics of the prospective fifth-generation airplane. Multifunctionality, stealth, supersonic flight without afterburner, the ability to conduct all-round fire, and supermaneuverability. The Americans abandoned the last requirement after the Grumman X-29 project was recognized as a failure. The reverse sweep wing has the following advantages. High controllability at low speeds. Increased allowable angle of attack and angular rate of turn. Improved aerodynamic efficiency due to reduced drag. Low radar visibility in the front hemisphere. Excellent takeoff and landing performance. Optimal pressure distribution between the wing and the wing tip. But there were also many problems in the creation of aircraft with a lot of problems. The main of which was the loss of static stability at high angles of attack at some speeds. In this case, the wing twists, which leads to its destruction. This problem could be solved by increasing the stiffness of the structure, but this led to an increase in weight. Another way to correct the fatal flaw was the use of electro-distance control system, which on the X-29 was triplex. This meant that decisions were made based on the vote of three analog computers that received all the data on flight modes. Grumman's wing had a composite skin to reduce weight while maintaining high strength. The first flight of the X-29 took place on December 14, 1984, and on December 13, 1985 Grumman broke the supersonic barrier. Only two examples were built, making a total of 242 flights, but the project was finally buried in 1991. Not much information can be found about the Soviet Su-37. No, this is not a mistake, you will understand why. Work on the project began in 1983, and in 1988, the program was curtailed. It is known about good developments in the field of aerodynamics, application of composites, and automated control system. In the conditions of perestroika and the ongoing conversion, all expensive projects were closed, including the Su-37. A happy circumstance for the project's revival was the USSR Navy's need for short takeoff and landing fighters for aircraft-carrying cruisers. The project was renamed Su-27KM, shipboard modified version, but in 1990 it was shut down due to funding difficulties. The further fate of the project depended on the chief designer and the management of the Sukhoi Design Bureau, which took over the financing. The work on the future Su-47 was carried out in the strictest secrecy. Although for the Americans the project of the fifth generation aircraft had not been a secret since 1994, and in 1996 pictures of two airplanes appeared, one of which looked like a Su-27, but the other, black with an unusual shape and the numbers 32, was named by them C-32. It was the Su-37 Burkut, which took to the air on September 25, 1996, just 18 days later than the American F-22A. Despite the difference in financial capabilities, fifth-generation fighters appeared in the US and Russian Federation at the same time. The fighter is flown by a single pilot, seated in a 30 degrees reclined seat to withstand overloads of up to 9G when maneuvering. The cockpit canopy is one piece to improve visibility and reduce radar signature. The hull is oval in profile, widening after the air intake, which has the appearance of a circular segment in cross-section. Additional upper controllable air intakes are designed for takeoff and landing and maneuvering.